This is the LP that never ends. Good morning, everybody. It's midnight and beyond. Welcoming you back to the world of Undertale. Quite literally, the LP that never stinking ends. In the last episode, we went through the genocide route and we completed it. In this episode, I have been. It has been brought to my attention that there is one more route left to Undertale that I need to experience. And that is hard mode. And of course, knowing this game, it's not just a hard mode of the game, it is a completely different run altogether. So because of that, I am going to uh, begrudgingly record it. Not begrudgingly, like, I'm having fun with this game, as you all know, I love the game, it's just that I really want it to stink an end, but hard mode is something that apparently needs to be experienced. It's not just a more difficult version of the previous modes, it is a completely different experience that I think I need to experience. And believe it or not, it is, a, it is the version that I was going to experience in my first playthrough by accident. Uh, let me explain real quick. What you need to do to activate hard mode is name the fallen human Frisk. Uh, by the way, spoilers for the pacifist run, I guess. You should not be watching this if you haven't seen the entire LP or played the game for yourself. I hope that goes without saying. But here's how this works. If you name the fallen human Frisk, it activates hard mode. But here's the thing. I can't be completely dumb on everything, I gotta be honest with all of you, I knew that the human's name was Frisk before playing Undertale. And that was through my own uh, research, because I wanted to know what the main protagonist's name was, because in RPGs I like to name the character um, their official name, except for like Pokemon, but I always like to name the characters their official names, I never name characters in Earthbound or Mother 3 different names or anything like that. So I wanted to know what the character's name was, and I wasn't aware that it was a spoiler, though I should have probably assumed that, because if you look at Fangamer, um, like, look at all the merchandise or official artwork or whatever, they never refer to Frisk as Frisk, they always refer to them as the human. So that is why they didn't want you knowing the name Frisk, because A, it activates hard mode, and B, it is sort of a spoiler. So, I actually found out about hard mode a bit early on, a bit earlier than I was supposed to, and I'll actually include that clip um, from my first recording of Undertale way back in the day uh, for you, all of you to see. So, here that here is that. That is. I think I sacrificed my ability to speak when sacrificing my soul. Or maybe I never had that to begin with. So, I do know for a fact that the main character's name... is Frisk. I don't know if Frisk is a boy or a girl. I don't know if this is supposed to be revealed to you later and this is like the final boss's name that changes it to your name. So it's gonna be like, you thought your name was Frisk this entire time. Well, it turns out your name is actually Frisk. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not messing everything up by knowing this because I've tried really singing hard to avoid any and all spoilers. But I do know that sometimes this character is just called the human. Though I do also know that its name is Frisk, so... I don't know, I guess we'll just have to go in and see. Warning, this name will make your life- WHAT?! Um, no. Is that, is that actually a thing? Like, should I not know that right now? What if my name is... Jeffrey. Oh, I can't even fit my full name, Jeffrey. Is this name correct? I shouldn't know that their name is Frisk. That's awkward. Huh. That is a spoiler. So yeah, that was interesting to see when I was turning on the game for the first time. But yes, we're going to go ahead and play hard mode for real this time because there's really nothing else left for us to do. So we're just gonna name the character Frisk and have ourselves a happy pappy go lucky time. Warning, this name will make your life heck proceed anyway. Like, being greeted with that when knowing absolutely nothing about Undertale was just so stinking funny. I was like, oh god! It was just so stinking weird. Now, before we go into the game, I just want to explain the name uh, the other of the other human real quick. It's never said anywhere in the game, but a lot of people 
like, have come to the conclusion that the human that appears at the end of Genocide Run is named Chara. Uh, whether or not that's just a joke name, as in it's short for character, maybe it's named, pronounced Kara, I don't really know. But apparently in all of Undertale's uh, beta screenshots, it has, uh, they all show the character's name being Chara. So I guess that's where the name comes from. But if you also, uh, maybe I could show right here. Um, I think it said if I name the character Chara, nothing changes if you name your character Chara in any playthrough, so it's just up to you whether or not you want to name them that. I knew of the name Chara, it's just that I, didn't, I wasn't sure if it was a spoiler or not, so I didn't name it, name my character Chara during the genocide route. Yeah, right there, it says the true name. That's all it does, it just says the true name, so that is what it is, leads people to believe that the second human, or I guess in this case the first human's name, is Chara. There's a lot of timeline explanation things that I'm not entirely sure about yet. I might be talking about it at a later point, but from here onward, I'm going to be looking up stuff about Undertale because I think I've experienced everything that I need to experience aside from hard mode. But uh, that's really all that gets changed when you name the character Chara. It just has, says the true name. Nothing in the game actually gets changed because you use that name. If you name the character Frisk, however, it does activate hard mode. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. And this will hopefully be the final stinking playthrough of Undertale. As much as I like the game, I would like to move on to other things. So, without further delay, let's get things started. Here I am, once again. I saw that show on TV recently, so that's why I got that song stuck in my head. It's actually a really good song, it makes me feel motivated and stuff. Howdy! I'm Flowey, Flowin' the Flower! <sighs> I'm just sick of you. You're new to the underground, aren't you? Golly, you must be so confused. So, from one, my understanding of the hard mode, it doesn't matter what sort of run you do. You could do neutral, genocide, or pacifist, and it does not matter. So, I'm just gonna skip through text that I think I've seen before, and uh, just sort of ignore it. Because I don't really care to have more repeat text that we've seen three stinking times already. And I'm just gonna go about it the way I sort of want to. I'm gonna try doing a pacifist run, uh, sort of to make amends for my failure of a pacifist run during my first playthrough. So I guess we'll just do it like that, I suppose. And that's sort of what you're supposed to do after a genocide run. You're supposed to like do a pacifist run after that one. It's a lot of weird things that need to be explained, so I'll try and get back into it. I'll try to explain it once I'm done with the flowy segment right here, but we just need to hurry up and get uh, Madurdurdurd by Flowey for the, like the umpteenth time. Can I have it? Okay. I could activate it prematurely, but it doesn't actually do anything. Hooray! And here's our beloved goat mom. Uh, let's see. Come along this way. Oh, hey, I can actually follow her. Can I actually... Uh, I was trying to talk to her before she disappeared. Uh, the shadow of the ruins looms above, filling you with determination. HP full restored. I don't want to save just yet. I am aware of some things of hard mode, so I'm, again, I'm, I like to be completely honest with all of you. I know of some things in this area that, um, what hard mode is all about. So for that reason, I'm just like doing things the way that I am. Sorry if that sounds confusing, but I guess I'll just try and explain. This is the part where I stop being a blind up here and start explaining things. And that was a weird thing. I didn't think I'd go through the door at that angle. But, um, I'm just sort of going to be explaining to you what the game expects you to do after the genocide run. Honestly, I was right when I was right with my first initial thought of it at the beginning of the run. The genocide run is not meant to be experienced. It is meant to only be there if you so desire to experience it. If your own sick and twisted desire wants to see everybody die, even though you saved everyone and your journey should be over. If you experience the genocide run, there is literally nothing there for you. And that's the point, like, it's sort of, uh, look away or turn the volume off if you haven't seen Infinity War yet, but it's sort of like the same thing with the end of that movie, how the whole point of it just ending like that is because, what do you expect? The villain won and it's over. And we never really get to see that really in movies because the heroes always win, but when the villain wins with their plot of destroying the world, they did it! What do you have to do after that? There is nothing, because it cost everything. 
So, I guess I was right from the very beginning, in which I would not be happy with the genocide ending. So, that is what that's all about. I'm glad that I didn't do it first, but I'm still questioning why they made- why people recommend that I did not- that I saved it for last. I have some answers as to why, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Real quick though, you can see that hard mode has already reared its ugly head. Originally they had all these arrows pointing to the switch we were supposed to press, but now the arrows are missing. Ooh, they're up in the difficulty. Splendid! I am proud of you, little one. Let us move to the next room. Yeah, so this is a very cheeky way of making it a bit more difficult. Uh, you'll need to be prepared for any situation. However, worry not, this process is simple. So like I said, I'm going to be doing a pacifist run of just this area for now. So I'm just going to mercy. Oh, wait, do I have to act with it? Talk? Uh, it doesn't seem much for conversation. Toriel seems happy. You won! Hooray! And yeah, just keep on going. Uh, is there anything different in this room? I don't think there is. Is this when we encounter enemies for the first time? I thought, yeah, it is. Uh, the enemies do actually change in hard mode, as you would expect. Right now, it's just the frog, so that's not anything new. But later on, they will change a little bit. And I like how the frog just walks away so sad. I'm having a fun time watching other people's Let's Plays of Undertale now because I've always avoided them for so long. Of uh, Video Games Awesome's playthrough has been super hilarious. I love their um, reactions to everything. I love uh, Fraser's interpretation of Papyrus, and then I love his interpretation of Sans really because uh, mine and his uh, interpretation of Papyrus is pretty much the same thing. But with Sans, he makes him like super cheeky, like he's always holding back the urge to laugh, and it just seems really stinking funny. I always, I always pictured Sans as just like. Um, super chill and quiet. Before I even knew who, who these characters were like, um, Brooke, or not Brooke, but Papyrus, I wanted, I sort of wanted to force the Brooke personality onto him because I just love Brooke so much. I love doing that voice. And I was really worried that I would end up regretting that because it wouldn't really fit him as a character, but it very much did fit him as a character in the end, so I'm glad that I was able to use the Brooke voice for Papyrus to such extremes. And as for Sans, I don't know why, just there's something about his design, uh, there's something with the skeleton, uh, aspect that makes me think um i just think of like hollow wind noises like blowing through the skull and um just sort of a quiet vibe with him that or just with skeleton characters in general that i would uh picture and i'm glad i got to use that with uh with sans because that's just how, how i always interpreted him and i've seen the lines like i'm rooting for you kid i've seen that o over the years like on the internet so it just seemed fitting to give him that quiet voice, being like, yeah, I'm rooting for you, kid, just like sighing and having like a very quiet, low-key demeanor. And it's very fitting, like being put aside with Papyrus, who's like very insane and crazy, how he's super loud and then Sans is super quiet. That's just how I always interpreted it. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna keep on going through here. And so explaining the genocide route, what they expect you to do after that. Uh, Chara said that they would re oh hey here's the final frog uh, appearing in the game a lot earlier than in than it should uh, I guess I think we just compliment it and oh geez <laughs> I think we just compliment it we go through here it's so stinking peaceful having a very peaceful fight after the stinking sands nonsense ribbit ribbit excuse me human I have some advice for you about badly monsters I think this is all the same but uh, what's up here Oh yeah, this is a bit of a different thing. I didn't get to experience this in my first playthrough, but there are only three pieces of candy you could take here um, during your first playthrough. But if you keep on taking some, take candy, how disgusting. Oh, wait, I think it's four originally. Take a third one. In this heckish world, you can only take three pieces of candy. Yeah, in the original run, if you're not playing hard mode, then you could take up to four before the bowl falls over and like, now that's on the ground, you can't pick it up anymore. But in this version, in hard mode, you can only have three. Another very cheeky way of making it not really a hard mode. And I guess having harder enemies appear earlier on isn't very difficult either because you beat the game at level one anyway, so it's not really uh, outlandish of them to give you the final area enemies at the beginning of the game because you're at the same strength as you were before. So it's kind of funny. Uh, Cinnabon, click, click. Uh, yeah, Cinnamon Butterscotch. But yeah, Chara said that they would return the world uh, back to us if we offered them our soul. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Can you believe it? Yeah, we got the whims a lot now instead of whims son. Oh, uh, compliment. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting that uh, I'm not sure exactly what Chara has done that uh, makes everything different. Uh, 
I'm not sure what offer my soul offers up to Chara, if anything will get changed in future playthroughs of Undertale. I'm aware that something changes, I don't know what exactly it is though, but it's not worth playing the entire game again, or it's not worth showing you again, rather. So for that reason, I'll probably have one bonus, one more bonus video later on that will show you uh, where things end up at the end of the game after you complete a genocide route. You could activate these things if you do a genocide route first, but it's just not recommended because it doesn't flow well. And I guess that's the reason why people tell you, or people tell me not to do a genocide run first, because with how it ended, I probably would have done it earlier on just because the pacifist run is such a more satisfying note to end on, but the pacifist run gets forever altered if you um, do a genocide run first. So for that reason, they want you to do a neutral run first, then pacifist, then genocide. And I think from what I read, it said that you aren't able to do a, a pacifist run before a neutral run. I don't know what stops you. Like, I might have to look that up. I'll probably talk about that in a bonus video in the future, but it might be spoilers for something that uh, I'll be showing later on. I'm not going to be showing it in this video. But it is something that I would like to show at some point. And I guess I technically don't need to be fighting enemies. It's just if I want money. Because we've got to have money. Uh, just avoid all these things. I could just flee from everything, but I don't want to. And there you go. Uh, go over here. Forgot about the talking rock. The almighty talking rock! Goes over there. Push this back over here. Be funny if, like, he has... Uh, does he move around a lot more? Oh, god, we got more enemies. What the fruit? You tripped over some moldasas. That's a new one. I've never seen this before. Switch, fix, lie down. Switch. You can counter Moldessa to try a new look. Uh, its face shifts. <laughs> huh. Is this a exclusively hard mode enemy, or... Uh... I'll eat the monster candy. Is it a exclusively a hard mode enemy, or is it something entirely new? I'm gonna wanna run away. Ran away, got zero experience and two gold. I got gold even though I didn't do anything. Interesting. Uh, sorry, I just ran away from that, it's just that I haven't saved at all, and uh, I did not want to experience dying right there. Okay, we got another one. Uh, fix. You adjust Moldessa's face, it seems to be happy with its new look. <laughs> uh, I wonder if that'll allow me to spare one of them? Yes, I can spare that one, and it looks sort of like a person when it's spared. Interesting, it looks like a... looks like a... Yes Man Jr. from Earthbound. That's unfortunate. Frisk, stay determined. I guess we needed to see that at some point. Why was it not saving again? I don't think no. Okay, I take it back. Hard mode is really stinking hard at the beginning of the game when you don't have any stinking items to heal with. And I don't want to use my monster candies because I gotta use them on stinking Toriel because I'm gonna get my butt kicked like I have a million times in the past. <sighs> Slowly considering doing a genocide run again for hard mode, but I don't know. I don't even want to imagine what hard mode. This doesn't seem correct. I don't even want to imagine what hard mode Sans is like. So I'll keep going. I got through without falling the hole for once, guys. Aren't you proud of me? That must mean that this is the time I finally get through this stinking area. I heard that borders can add some color to the world. Yeah, I got the borders and stuff. There's a frog theme border. I think in the um, other version, in the PC version, it tells you to like press F4 to like. Uh, very helpful. Is rather helpful. Remember, sparing is just saying you won't fight. Maybe one day you'll fight someone. So I think when you in the PC version, if you uh, the borders don't exist, so he just talks about. God darn it! <laughs> he talks about how what the fruit? I can't get a sentence out. Me go spell. Sure, talk to it. Talking has no effect. Then why would you give me an option? Oh, Jesus Christ, this is horrible. Um, he just talks about, like, pressing F4, like, gets you out of full screen mode or something like that, and he, um, talks about how he's sad that F4 doesn't mean Frog 4 or something like that, and apparently that's a big meme in the Undertale community. And as for this guy who tells you about the yellow, uh, words telling you when you could spare an enemy, if you say it's bad, then he'll actually turn it off. Then you won't know when you're able to spare an enemy or not. So it's like an additional hard mode, but it's not needed for this hard mode, so I'm gonna keep it on. But if you say no, then he'll actually turn it off, which is actually kind of funny. Hello, I have a question. You like things other than butterscotch or cinnamon too, do you not? Oh, what am I asking? I'll keep, I'll keep looking. <laughs> 
I don't remember that being the other versions, whatever. There's just one switch. Uh, just run over here. Oh, yeah, we gotta jump down and look for them all and stuff. I'm not gonna bother fighting the carrot. Uh, just gonna go over here, run into an enemy. Jesus Christ. By the way, you know that song that I sing whenever I get frustrated? I'm like, I don't really know what else to say that I haven't said already in passing before. Apparently it's from Katamari and I just never really realized it. I obviously heard the song before because I was singing it, but I never was able to know where the song was from. I just had it stuck in the back of my head. But after the announcement of Katamari coming to the Switch, which I'm super excited about, I realized that's from Katamari, which is really cool. And hey, what's even cooler is that we finally stinkin' made it! Let's go over here and get our stinking toy knife and be done with this area. You found a toy knife, equip the heck out of it. Oh, now I only have two, one stinking candy and one donut for the fight with Toriel. I might have to use the pie early on. Oh dear, so sorry for the trouble. I still don't know what that's about. There's probably some lore behind that phone call that I don't know about. Are you here? They're there. I'll heal you. I should not have left you alone for so long. I suppose I cannot hide any longer. Come, small one. Fine, I'll go around. Save the game again. Uh, have a good old burp. Do you smell that? It's the smell of discovery. Made a snail pie. I thought we might celebrate your arrival. I want you to have a nice time living here. So I... Here, I have another surprise for you. Uh, did she say she made it? This is it. Did she say she made us a snail pie? Is that what happens in hard mode? She actually makes us a snail pie. A room for us. Something burning. Um, uh, make yourself at home. Uh, what's in here? We got. Look at these cool toys. They don't interest you at all. Oh, I didn't mean to sleep in here. But we do get the pie. Uh, I found a slice of snail pie. Uh huh. Snail pie heals some HP and acquired taste. Uh, boy, an empty photo frame, it's really dusty. A box of kids' shoes in, dis in disparity of sizes. Nothing else over here. So she actually does make us a snail pie in hard mode. Just a regular old bucket of snails. Toriel's diary, read the circle passage. You read the passage. Why did the skeleton want a friend? Because he was feeling bonely. Nothing different over here. Okay. Nothing of note aside from the snail pie. Uh, the mirror's gotta have some interesting thing to it. It's you. Just it's you? Okay, we're back to that again. We truly have reset. Even though we know the true name, you think they would have something worse. It's like, how did you know it was you, Frisk, or something like that? I don't know. Uh, we can't go through there yet. We have to talk to Toriel to get her to let us go downstairs. Shouldn't we have, like, a defense item by this point? I don't remember. Oh, we have the bandage, but... Uh, brand chocolate bar in the fridge. Nothing of no size of the pie. Imitate Intimidates you too much to, for you to eat it. Okay. Guess there's nothing left to do but to talk to her already. Uh, I'm just gonna not dilly-dally any further. I just say, when can I go home? Since he uses for snails, how to exit the ruins? Um, how about an exciting snail fact? Did you know the snails talk? Really? Slowly? Just kidding, snails don't talk. But goats do, apparently. Interesting, how to exit the ruins? I have something to do, stay here. Oh, I can run through her and have nothing happen, okay. Save the game. And it's time for a very annoying fight. Uh, so, hard mode is going to be extremely difficult, I presume. I don't even want to imagine what the boss fight's going to be like, but after everything that happened in the genocide run, I do want to get to the end of neutral or pacifist again to see if I can fix things. Could I actually fight Chara if I get through everything all over again? I have no idea. Let's find out. Toriel blocks the way. Well, I know how to fight you this time, and that is not fighting at all. Uh, she seems more or less unchanged from four, just really stinking difficult. Oh god. 
Uh, okay. God darn it. I hate this fight so stinking much. Use a monster candy. Uh, okay. Just stand still for this one. Or not. Just slightly move up. Okay. Spare again. Oh, jeez. Oh, god. Oh. Question mark. Oh, I'm learning how to do the fight. What are you doing? I'm trying to do this fight that I haven't learned how to do, even though it was like my third time doing it. Spider Donut. Oh, avoid that. Go through here. Uh, the fight seems, the boss fight seems relatively unchanged from before. Uh, thankfully. Hopefully it's just the enemies appearing in different places. That's the only difficult thing about hard mode. Sparegan, what are you proving this way? I have no idea. I just really want to play hard mode and just know uh, everything that there is to know about Undertale. Okay, go around here. Bounce around, bounce around, bounce around! Snail pie. You ate the snail pie, your HP was maxed out. Uh, I guess it does heal all of your HP. Uh, it he healed all but one. Spare? Stop it. Okay, she's not liking that. Uh, just keep on avoiding things. Mercy. Stop looking at me that way. Uh, she's getting upset. Her attacks are getting weaker, I think. Uh, which would make it very disappointed if I lost. Go away. Oh, jeez. Did I do it? Thank you, okay. Right at the last stinking second. Toriel prepares for a magical attack, but she's not able to do it. Huh. <sighs> Keep on doing it? I know you want to go home, but... But please, go upstairs now. I promise I'll take good care of you here. I know we do not have much, but... We can have a good life here. Why are you making this so difficult? Please, go upstairs. <laughs> Pathetic, is it not? I cannot e even save a single child. No, I understand. You would just be unhappy trapped down here. The ruins are very small once you get used to them. It would be- it would not be right for you to grow up in a place like this. My expectations, my loneliness, my fear. For you, my child, I will put them aside. Hello. And that's the end of hard mode. The dog speaks? What voice do I- also Toriel's face? What voice do I give the dog? Um... Well, oh wait, it's a dog obviously, so snarf. And that's the end of hard mode, snarf. Yeah, he looks like he would have that voice with his tiny little mouth being like, Yes, the end of hard mode. Eh? Nani? You are ending it now? And on such a dramatic moment? That's the difficult part. Not the bullets, but accepting that it's all over. But there will be more, will there not? Maybe. Knowing the answer is... HARD! Hey! Aren't you supposed to be dying or something? <laughs> what the fruit? Well, what is the point of that now? What will you do instead? Hmm, perhaps I will bake another pie. That last one ended up a little burnt. I thought it was good. Theoretically. It's not like I ate it all while you were fighting! Wow. It breaks the fourth wall and ends hard mode. Hey, hey! Can I have some pie? I ate it accidentally. You're just going to eat it all. Was I supposed to save the pie? Uh-oh. I can help! Snoring on the floor is not help! I'm not snoring. I'm cheering you on in my sleep! Oh my god. Oh, you're still here? Don't you have anything better to do? What the fruit? Is that it? Is that seriously it? Undertale! That's the end of hard- <laughs> Hard mode! Coming? Maybe? Eh, don't count on it. Wow! Um... Is that it?
Is that seriously it? That's the end of the stinking game? Wait, oh, hello. Hey! What's the holdup? Shouldn't she be dead by now? I've been waiting in that room for... Hard mode? Gee, you better take a picture. People are gonna think you're really cool. Not! Golly, talk about a tryhard! Pathetic! Um, uh, so are you gonna keep going or. It's over. Oh, I knew that! Why does everyone have to be so condescending? So what's your excuse, sitting around here? Don't you have anything better to- I already said that. Okay! Is anyone coming the- oh, fade out, fade out? Hello, oh, title screen. Undertale. So, you do get a reward for completing hard mode. It is, it is in settings. Settings! Sweep a leaf, sweep away the troubles! Uh, did Temi write this in a lady dog? Okay, oh no, it's a leaf on top of the dog's head. Uh, that is not the reward, seeing a bunch of leaves on here. I'm not really sure what triggers this, but I know that the reward is actually in the borders. We could have dynamic, which switches it around uh, depending on the area we're in. We still have sepia and simple as usual. Uh, we could have, yeah, that's it. The beauty theme! That is your reward for completing hard mode. You may have seen this in some trailers for Undertale, uh, Undertale merchandise and stuff, well, when they have a bunch of toy figures uh, acting out the fights and stuff. Yeah, that background was not just for the trailer. You could play through the entire game with the annoying dog and super sexy anime Toriel Attack on Titan version and Knuckles because why the fruit not? Uh, none, simple, sepia, dynamic, beauty. Oh, I don't have the option to have just a other border anymore. Like usually, after I beat neutral mode, it let me just use the ruins theme or the waterfall or hotland theme on its own without a uh, having them change when I go to different areas, but I guess that gets lost to me after I reset the universe. I guess that makes sense. But yeah, the beauty theme gets unlocked to you after you complete hard mode. I don't know what you get in the Steam version because the Steam version doesn't have borders. Teresa, if you want to tell us if there is any reward for hard mode in the Steam version, uh, feel free to do so. Hi. But other than that, that's all you get. That is the entirety of hard mode. And that is it for this fourth playthrough. Oh my god, I am so sick of Undertale, <laughs> I'm sorry. It went from being a game that was like, oh, this is good, this is alright, it's pretty cool. But then it turned into, this is my, one of my favorite games of all time. Then it turned into one of my least favorite games of all time because I'm so stinking angry at the end of it. And now I'm just like, I'm tired and I just want to stop playing and play something else and maybe I'll enjoy it in the future, but... Genocide Run is not to be experienced. Long story short. I will try to wrap up this Let's Play in one more video, where I explain everything. Who Chara is, why they exist, what Genocide Run means, what happens if you do a pacifist or a neutral run after Genocide Run, what happens if you do a second Genocide Run, and one other secret that I have yet to uncover. I don't know when that bonus video is coming, but it'll happen at some point. For now though, I'm taking a stinking break. Thank you all for watching, this is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.